Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business. Believing Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Teacher, author, speaker, delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a heart and message for the people today. Bonnie would like to remind you of the 800 number on the screen. Please feel free to call at any time throughout the broadcast and share your concerns. Leave your prayer request and someone will pray with you. And now, teacher, author, and speaker, Bonnie. You're watching Vision Plus. Without a vision, the people perish. We want some of you that maybe have lost your job, everything from homeless to you just can't get another job and you need to learn some more skills. Doesn't that apply to most of us? I know my uh, daughter is so wanting to learn more skills. She says, I don't know if I can handle that computer, but she's going to learn. And it can be just computer skills, people skills, we'll find out about that. Some of you remember when we had the testimonies of the people from the Marshall County area, Albertville and Gunnersville and all over that area, and they gave their testimonies about what Christian Women's Job Corps had done for them. And I had gotten so excited about it that I talked to a person, went in, I just was there maybe at the wrong time, I almost forgot the time this time. And her name is Elaine Dixon. She is one that's over the Madison County area and northern Alabama. As far as I know, I don't know of any others, but she'll get me straight on that, I'm sure. And uh, she is the, uh, no, she's not, she's more than the site coordinator. Executive director. Executive director, I knew that. And she'll tell us what all she does and how she puts it all together. You go into her office, she's got all kinds of little gifts laying around. I wanted to look at them and say, oh, what is this? But Christian Women's Job Corps is for people who need to go to the next level of their life. And many times it's, it could be a divorce, it could be a illness, it could be many things that could happen to you. And Or you just want to get out of the rut and get a job. How do you start? So first of all, welcome Elaine Dixon. Thank you. Elaine, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a native of Huntsville, Alabama. And Not many of those know. No, there aren't. And I graduated from Auburn University and moved back here after I graduated and got married and lived here with my family and wanted to do something that would help in the community. So I kind of got involved with Christian Women's Job Corps about two, in the year 2000. We've been working with it, volunteering or um, on the payroll since. Mm -hmm. Well, I had gone to the Circle Luncheons. Did you have the Von Braun Center? And I was trying to think it was the sister of the Gatlin Bible. Madonna Gatlin. Yes. She was so unbelievable. And then, of course, another time you had some of your actual people mm -hmm. that have been helped, both all nationalities, all, uh, they could have any background, in fact, in fact. So tell me, what was it about Christian Women's Job Corps, in addition to helping others, that you thought was that was special? Well, the fact that we are a hand up, not a hand out. We work with women who need the skills to go out and look for a job and are willing to do that. And we are making life changes, hopefully, uh, in their lives, lifelong changes that they can take with them to better themselves. Do you have uh, classes coming up in the fall, yes. I think, so they can register any time, yes, probably, they can register from now to the fall, and we'll start out by how do they register, so they can get, we're going to tell that again, but I want our editor, if he can, Thaddeus Brooks, to get it on this website. So. Okay. They can call First Baptist, and I can get the number of our administrative recruiter. Her name is Kristen Wilkerson, and her number is 428. 9415. And since this goes uh, to other areas, it's a 256 yes, area. It's 256 number. Okay. And she can explain to them the application process. But basically, they can pick up an application at our First Baptist Church, Governor's Drive location. We're located at 600 Governor's Drive uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. And they can come to the main church office and get an application, turn it in. And then 
uh, we call them back and set up a time for them to meet with a site coordinator and have uh, an interview just to make sure our program meets their needs and give them a chance to ask us more questions about the program. Well, tell us about the program. I know you have computer training, but there's other skills. We do. Um, along with our basic computer skills, the ladies learn how to write a good resume, cover letter, uh, interviewing skills. We practice with them. They do mock interviews so that they can understand the process of how the interview will go and take some of the fear factor out of going and having an interview. So they don't just walk in and say, how much am I going to get and what are my hours and when's my vacation? Right. We, we <laughs> teach them <laughs> what questions to ask and, and what not to and ask. the tough questions that they need to answer. We help them with that. We do a money management class so that they can handle the money that they get from their income. We also do communication skills that we teach in some of the classes to help them with verbal and nonverbal communication skills. Well, first of all, what are some of the questions that they should not? That, well, let's go with what they should ask. That's better. Well, they should ask uh, what is expected of them. They should ask who they would be reporting to. They should have some kind of idea of what is going on at the company they are interviewing for before they go into the interview, and maybe ask a few more questions to clarify exactly what they would be doing and how they would be helping the company. So now that they're going to have some computer skills, and many can even go to the library and other places to use a computer so they could maybe even look up the website of the company. Yes. If they have access to a computer or if they don't, other places do have access to computers and they could find out what is TRW, what is Boeing, what is Switzerland right. whatever it is. We teach them to search the job websites mm -hmm. and we give them some several websites that have job listings on them so mm -hmm. that they can know who to go to and contact when they're looking for a job and also to research about the company when they are going to, to try to interview for a job. What are some of the horrible things that may have happened to you or to someone. Have you ever had an experience that, oh no, I can't believe this happened to us. During the classes? Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some tragedies. We've had um, students who have lost family members. We've had students who um, have had illness while they're in the class and haven't been able to continue and things like that. Now but they can come back though. They can come back. If they aren't able to complete our program that time, they can come back at a future time and do the classes again. And, be able to finish the program. So we don't want to dwell on just those kinds of things, but tell me about some of the successes that have had. And if you can say, you you could go ahead and tell the story about some of them that have been to the circle luncheons and given their testimony. Right. We had a woman who was in a, an abusive relationship and got out of that and just didn't really know where to go as far as getting a job and providing for her children. And she came to our classes and was able to uh, get over her fear of the computer. She had very little computer skills and she really excelled in the classes, became a mother figure for some of the other students and now is going on and getting an education at a local college and just doing really well. She has a job and she is very successful. She's on her own, she has her own apartment and she's able to provide for herself and her children. That is so exciting. Well, what are some of the types of people that you really want to help? Give me some examples. Like well, when now she got out of the abusive relationship, so. Right. It, the women come from all backgrounds. We're here to help women who have been through divorce or lost their husband or those that have been stay-at-home mom for a while and want to get in the workforce and just don't have the skills and the self-confidence to do that. Uh, also, women who were not able to complete high school, we have a GED program for them so that they can work to study for the GED and be able to take that. We uh, also do an internship program for our women that have a high school diploma or GED so that they can get hands-on experience in the workplace. It's also a good reference for them and it's a good way for them to update their resume. When I was teaching in a college in Waco, Texas, we had an intern program there actually had 26 interns that would go out to different jobs and uh, companies that would let them work they go to school in the morning and work in the afternoon or evening or whatever that you know we had a schedule uh, what are some of the things that they've done here in the intern program oh, good. yeah it's a great way for them to get ex experience a lot of them want an office administrative type work and so they've done filing and They've done data entry, they've created files, they've answered the phone, uh, greeted people, and just learned a lot of things that they need to do in an office setting. 
Do you help them with <coughs> goal setting and objectives and vision for what they can be? We do. We have a worksheet that we give them when they get with their mentors that we provide. And it helps them focus their goals and make them a little bit more specific so that they can come up with the steps they need to take to reach their goals. One of the people that we interviewed that was in, gave her testimony, she had been in an abusive relationship and went and started the program. Then she got back to drinking again. And then she, uh, real, then she got back with the old crowd again. But then she realized, this is not what I want to do with my life. And she came back uh, practically on her knees saying, can I please come back? And they let her come back and she had to go the next term. She mm -hmm. missed too much of this one. But the joy in her face, she got her. She'd been in jail and she got her children back again. It was just so exciting to see what can happen when a person uh, does get out of that. Do you help to uh, what do you do for a person that's, say, in an abusive relationship and maybe they give you a call or they uh, t talk to a neighbor? Are you able to get them to a whole place or someplace? We do have the resources. We know who to call uh, if mm -hmm. they're in an abusive relationship and we really try to encourage them to make that call and get in touch with the agency that it can help them for instance whole place if they look up christian women's job corps on the internet they'll see all over the country there are yes christian women's job corps how did it get started and when it got started um, about in the mid 90s when the women's missionary union which is an auxiliary group of the southern baptist convention took a trip in the appalachian region and saw the extreme poverty there and they wanted to do something to help women and so they decided to, to go back and make some plans and they came up with four pilot sites in the United States in which women were being mentored by women. That's a big, that's one of our eight key elements is the mentoring. And just also help them with some of the life and job skills that they needed. And the four pilot sites did well and so they decided to develop a training curriculum so that others could start their Christian Women's Job Corps sites in the United States. And that's what they've done. And in order to be called a Christian Women's Job Corps site, the site coordinator and, and uh, other workers that are involved possibly need to go through the training. The, the site and you're going to training. teach that in? Yes, in Montgomery. Yeah. I will be teaching that in, in June uh -huh. in Montgomery. Well, what will you actually teach? Do you have curriculum? Yes, we do. Use? We teach, a lot of it's teaching um, people how to, to run a nonprofit organization because that's what's involved. There's a lot of uh, prayer involved that goes in the, the first steps and then creating your advisory council and getting your volunteers organized and choosing your curriculum that you're going to, to teach to the students and there are just a lot of nuts and bolts involved in creating a Christian women's or a Christian men's job mm -hmm. course site. There are Christian men's job course sites too. Mm -hmm. Now of course I heard that but I've not been in touch with them or known about them but now to start a new one like in an area, Morgan County, for instance, is very interested in starting uh, one there in the Mad the Decatur Hearts a well, person that's starting that has the most influence and dedication is in Hearts. So, uh, but let's go through a little bit of what they will need to do. You know, first of all, they have to come to the training. They need to come to the training. How so many of them need to come? Just the site coordinator? Well, it, it's helpful for as many people that are going to be involved in the program to come. Okay. The, the training is for site coordinators, but other volunteers can gain a lot of insight into the program and an understanding of what's involved in creating a Christian Women's or Christian Men's Job Corps program. And so it's, if anyone else wants to come to the training, they're welcome to come also. Now there's a charge for that training. Yes. Which it must come from the person or somebody that right. get to pay for the training. Right. They do. And I know they could uh, get their rich uncle, if he's not still <laughs> in the poorhouse, to help them out. But that's like $100. It's, or, uh, I think it's a little bit more than that. I don't remember the exact cost. Yeah. Then they have to stay in the hotel at their own expense. Yes and their night meal. They have a lunch meal furnished, don't yes. they? Yes. And right. they could stay for a room or something like yes, that to split that. their uh, expense as far as the, that is concerned. Now, so the mid-90s, and here we are 15 years later or so, mm -hmm. uh, how about uh, some, where were the four sites and how did you choose to have three sites just right here 
in the Huntsville Madison area? Well, I, the original sites, uh, pilot sites, I, I don't exactly remember where they were located, but they were kind of spread out all over the United States. I think one was in Texas and different areas like that. But we started with one site in Madison County, and then we decided that we needed to offer an evening site for those women that worked during the day and were in jobs that were not paying well enough and they wanted to get a better job. So we have an evening site at Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church on Winchester Road. Mm -hmm. We have another site at Hillsborough Heights Baptist Church that's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's a little, a little bit less hours than the First Baptist site, but they do the same type of thing as the First Baptist site. Job readiness classes in the morning, internship or GED in the afternoon at the Hillsborough site. Now, even though you're using the word uh, Baptist, the First Baptist, anybody can come. It yes. doesn't matter what religion they are right. or what right. They do not have to be a Christian or a Baptist to be a student <laughs> yeah. in our program. Uh -huh. And we are non-denominational. Mm -hmm. We do not teach any specific doctrine. So, when they come, they, well, first of all, the process is register. Call, yes. maybe you're wrong. Well, get the application. Get the yeah. application. Fill that out. And do they have to have recommendation from somebody? They do have to have referrals. Uh, mm -hmm. They have to have references, three references. Mm -hmm. um, and we want it to be someone who's not a family member, someone that they've worked with in the past, or mm -hmm. someone that, that, that they know, possibly a teacher or someone from their background. Mm -hmm. And we do call and, and check references. Mm -hmm. And those, but it doesn't matter if they have been like the one in the Morgan County, uh, that's in Morgan County, Marshall County, I'm sorry. Uh, she had been in jail from the DUI or something, right. so that doesn't keep them out of the program. No, no, we are wanting to help women that are trying to make changes in their life. Now, they, they can't be taking the drugs or drinking while they're in the program. Right, they need to be drug free. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is women that are going to be dedicated to coming to the program. We do have an attendance policy at our classes and they would have to be there you know, a certain amount of times and be able to carry through with the program and stay committed to it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not government funded at all? No, we receive our funding. We're in the budgets of several local churches. And then we have our big fundraiser once a year that you talked about earlier. It's called Circles at the mm -hmm. Civic Center. And mm -hmm. it's a great way for women to come and eat lunch with their friends and support our ministry. And we will do another one this November. Do you actually <laughs> go look for uh, companies to sponsor the circles lunch? We do. Certain mm -hmm. companies will. <clears throat> they will sponsor a table mm -hmm. and they can get their their name, you know, uh, highlighted for that and they can invite their company employees to sit at the table or they can offer those spots to some of our students. We want our current students in the job corps to come and be a part of our circles fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And uh, ones that, let's say a company has a table, I know Joan Detchmendy and uh, Lisa Cece and some of those have had tables. Well, they are responsible for paying for those lunches. They can do that or they can ask their friends to pay for their lunch. Sure. Either way. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what, uh, what are some of the things that have happened? Have you got any go uh, good stories of, now it's 15 years down the road, what do you have some well, we've, we've had lots of success stories. So we, we've had a lady that came in and she was so, her self-esteem was so low, she didn't think she could ever get a job. She didn't even want to go pick up an application, go in the door and pick up an application. She hadn't been in a marriage for many years and stayed at home, raised her children, and the marriage was in trouble and she knew that she needed to get out and be independent. And she came to the Christian Women's Job Corps and we taught her some computer skills and then in, as a result of being in her internship she gained that confidence that she needed to go out and find a job and she soon did find a job after graduating from our program and now she has been a mentor for some of us students who have come behind her and she also helps those who do an internship at her location where she works she kind of helps them and, and shows them the ropes and she went from being a shy person with low self-esteem to being a speaker at our Circles event and she spoke to over 700 people that day and mm -hmm. just really bloomed and then she's her marriage is she's back together with her husband and, mm -hmm. and her marriage is doing well so she just was able to really turn her life around as a result of being in our program. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had women who just uh, 
we, we had one who was raising three, um, five children and was trying, was struggling as a single mom, was on the, um, was receiving welfare and needed to get out of that. And, and then she came into our program. She had perfect attendance. She just really soared. And then she was able to go on and, and go to school at a local community college. And she made the honor roll. And then she was also able to give back to the community. She was involved in a program that uh, helps lower income people that needed help with their tax returns doing their income taxes and so she and a group of students there did that but she just really helped out in her community and made some changes in her life oh that isn't that exciting you've yeah. got to be really proud of those people we are that do that. it really makes me glad that i'm a part of this program when i see the changes in the women's life and see what god is doing in their lives mm -hmm. well give me an example of uh, some of the companies that that have interns? Well, we have had interns at UAB Family Medicine, at Raytheon, the uh, Huntsville Tax Office doing property taxes. Um, we've done internships at West Corporation, some of the other um, medical offices, local doctors will allow us to do, to do in internships there. And we are always looking for more places to have internships so that we can find opportunities for our students and hopefully it would be a turn into a pay position. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they start. As an intern, just give me an example of your interns. Let's say Raytheon. Mm -hmm. or give us an example of what, how you got them and how, what the student does and how that may have turned, maybe not that one, but some of them into the pay position. Well, we, we do a lot of networking to try to find our internship locations and Raytheon in particular was due to the fact that I spoke to the Society of Human Resource Managers and mm -hmm. so the HR person at Raytheon became interested in our program and wanted to know how she could help. So we decided that an internship would be a great way for them to partner with us and we sent a student out there. And this was a student who had had cancer as a child and, and dealt with the treatments her whole life and did not have a normal childhood because of, of her illness and was kind of not wanting to go to school. She had graduated from high school and started college and didn't finish and really was struggling and floundering and knowing what to do with her life. And she got in our program and got involved with us and did her internship at Raytheon. And she's not working for Raytheon anymore, but she is working for another company. And as a result of getting a good reference from the supervisor there at Raytheon, she was able to, to, have, to get that other job. And now she's decided to go back to school. And so her mother is very excited about that. I understood that. <laughs> I was like 16 when I got married, and then I had three children and went back to school, and now I have my doctorate. So I just kept going to school and going to school because I just loved it. In fact, when my daughter started to college and she was taking, taking art theory, I thought, I want to go back. <laughs> she was in the you know, just freshman cl uh, class. But uh, once you start learning, how wonderful it is to learn you do you mm -hmm. just want to keep learning keep learning well let's let's pretend uh now tony works at a company because we're going to pretend that his company here's your program and they say hmm maybe we could help that company and get have an intern so they would contact yes they you. could contact me mm -hmm. at elaine and elaine dixon, dixon. 256-428 9435. Okay. 256-428-9435. Now, let's say that they contact you. Give me a scenario. What do you say to me as a company? Well, we would tell them it's a win-win situation for them because they get the opportunity to have someone there to help with the workload and they're not paying them for the time that they're doing the internship, which is the 10 weeks that they're in our program. And, but also, if they do have some open positions and are looking to hire, it's a way for them to test the waters with that person before they actually hire them and to see what kind of work ethic they have and if they get along well with the other employment employees and, and understand how to do the job. And then if that's the case, then they can hire them and they haven't really lost anything if it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. So I've always heard, you can keep your job if you show up every day on time. That's right. <laughs> that's one of the big things, that show up every day on time. And then, of course, having the good attitude with right. the other people and trying to flow, as my daughter says, 
exact line to draw. <laughs> That's right. So uh, what? Uh, so this company has contacted you, and so you only use the in they only use the intern during the ten weeks. Yes. They That's don't right. use them in the summer unless they pay them. That's right. Whatever. Right. You don't have summer programs here. We do not know. have a summer program mm -hmm. here. You have two other site coordinators. Let's tell who they are. If they're well, we like, have three site coordinators. I don't do the site coordinating. Yeah. Uh, we no. have one at First Baptist. Her name is Hope Mackey. Mm -hmm. And sweet. then we have one at Union Hill Primitive Baptist, and her name is Constance Tiller. And then we have one at the Hillsboro Heights site. And her name is Pat Swinford. And all three of them are very dedicated women and really care for their students and in, in what happens in their lives. These uh, site coordinators are volunteers, aren't no, they? No, they do get paid. Oh, they part time. Do. Well, the, the site coordinator, I believe, in Marshall County, I believe those are volunteers. Right. Sometimes they're volunteers. Yeah, in our situation, they're paid. You, they're, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. But uh, they're still probably, they did a lot of volunteering before they got to be a site coordinator. Well, one of our, Constance was a mentor before she mm -hmm. became uh, a site coordinator, and then Pat was a teacher. She taught mm -hmm. the career class before she became a site coordinator, and, and Hope moved into town and uh, had a desire to work with women and, and be a part of the ministry, and so we got her plugged in pretty quickly after she moved to town. Good. So if you're there and you don't, you moved into town, you're not sure what to do, maybe this is an answer that you could just call the Christian Women's Job Corps, talk to Elaine or Hope or one of the other people, or if you're in another county, there are other people. They could still talk to you and or your group and find out if there is another one in the Muscle, muscle Shows or right. somewhere else. Well, Linda Henry is the state contact person mm -hmm. for Alabama. I don't have her contact information, no. but she would be the person that they could call and she could let them know about what sites are operating in Alabama and where there's a need for a site. Right. I know uh, one that's interested in the Mar and Morgan County has talked to her and she seemed to be really excited about it, getting mm -hmm. it going over in that area. We would love to have more sites mm -hmm. in Alabama. Yeah, that would be so good because it uh, makes our world a better place to live. Yes, it does. And, and I think that you're doing such an incredible job for giving me when I was uh, she was ready to do the TV show, and I had the speaking engagement that I couldn't get the program ready for. So we all have our dailiness of life challenges, don't we? That's right. And so, and if you have some dailiness of life that you'd like to have solved, or you know someone that would like to get back into the job uh, field, then maybe this is your answer. I just had a person that I talked to this morning, and she has a very good position in a assisted living place and I said what did you do before this and she said well stay at home mom I didn't really have any skills and I had to go to something like Christian Women's Job Corps to get some skills so if you're interested Christian Women's Job Corps or now we've learned there's a Christian Men's Job Corps and maybe um, either Elaine or Hope or Miss Henry could help you with finding out how where those people are yes and how to get involved i'm bonnie liphart along with tony liphart and elaine uh, dixon bless your heart for watching